So, yesterday I did a video listing the uh, four reasons, which hopefully you'll see before this one, as to why AEW is in the state that it is. And one of the top reasons I said that it's in the state that it is is because I believe Tony Khan is trying his best to please the new higher ups at Warner Bros. Discovery to get that, you know, deal that they want to help uh, them expand financially, um, you know, from a visual standpoint. You know, like give another hour to Rampage, maybe get some additional television for Ring of Honor, stuff like that. Um, which I believe explains partially the reasoning why there's such a chaotic atmosphere backstage. You know, and why certain talent is able to go off script when they shouldn't, or go off bullet points when they shouldn't, either in ring, doing promos, or backstage. And, you know, I'm not alone in, you know, some of the reasonings that I've listed. I mean, people that have defended AEW strongly and since its existence, its inception, you know, have felt the same way. JD from NY206, Solid Monster. From Solid Monster Sounds Off, which you can both catch on commentary tonight, doing House of Glory's high in, high intensity a fight. I P P I P I P V. Easy for me to say. I P P V. Yeah, the high intensity I P P V tonight on Fight TV. You can catch it. You can catch them, like I said, on commentary there. Just a little plug for them. Yeah, but the ho House of Glory Hog High Intensity IPPV tonight at Terminal 5 uh, in New York. Um, but anyway, people like JD, Solomonster, just Alex of Alex's World, and just Alex here on YouTube, Oop, excuse me, and many others have pretty much felt the same way. And, you know, her wine war. Just eating a, a Hawaiian roll. And I don't think you can blame them. But there is one question that, you know, I think kind of, um, I don't know if anybody's asked themselves this, you know, before they've come on camera and talked about it or gone on the mic and, re you know, done live or recorded audio for a podcast. Um, but, you know, when you listen to what's going on behind the scenes, it sounds very similar to a, you know, a similar situation. And I'm not saying the likes of Eric Bischoff or Paul Heyman or Eric Bischoff then Vince Russo and all that with WCW and ECW and all that. No. I'm talking more along the lines of a Herb Abrams of UWF, his UWF, if you will. Um, because of the fact that Herb you know, even though he signed a lot of talent, you know, he, you know, obviously he didn't seem to, to know what he was doing, you know, most of the time. I mean, yeah, you know, Tony Khan is not in that situation right now, thankfully, hopefully not. But the stories you would hear about Herb Abrams, you know, and how he ran things, you know, from the talent that was there. To, uh, to the people that work behind the scenes and stuff, it's like, you know, it, it's like the UWF had some kind of momentum. It looked like they could have momentum and everything. They had the potential to be a top tier or at least a semi-top tier promotion, but then it just all fell apart. It just all fell apart behind the scenes. And it got to a point to where, you know, Tony, not Tony, but Herb Abrams had these ambitious plans and all that to try to sell out the MGM Grand, which he did not. To sell out this Civic Center, which WWE had sold out on numerous occasions, and the, ND, and the NWA slash WCW at that time on numerous occasions, and he could not. All because of the fact that, you know, behind the scenes he was losing control, not just of himself, but, you know, you know, backstage with the talent and all that. And I'm not saying we're seeing a, 
you know, an identical situation with Tony Khan, but some might agree it's that the the beginning stages seem eerily similar. You know, that, you know, there is an eer very eerie similarity to the beginning stages of what caused Herb Abrams and mostly UWF, his UWF, to go downhill. Now, I'm not, like I say, I'm not saying that's what's really going on with Tony Khan, but still, it's, some may, some may make some eerily similarities to that. Now some have the right to say, well, it sounds more eerily similar to what Bischoff and Vince Russo did in WCW, and that's true. And some might say it's eerily similar to what Paul Heyman did in ECW, and that is true too. But, you know, the difference was, you know, they tried as best as they could, you know, too late, you know, very too little, you know, too, too, way too, too, too late on their kit on their parts, I should say, they at least try to remedy things. They try to fix things. You know, but, like I said, it was very, very, very too little and way, way, way too, too, too late on their ends. Um, you know, Herb, you know, from the stories you hear, you know, it was very similar in that. Like, he tried to fix things, but, <laughs> you know, there was no way he could fix. Like, the very, very too little deal, pfft, it was like, teeny weeny weeny too little, and way way gargantuan too late for him to fix things, no matter how hard he tried. And because of this, it caused a lot of chaos. And some, you know, like I said, some that was there, like a B. Brian Blair and others, you know, like I said, that worked in the ring, that worked behind the scenes, that knew Herb saw it themselves, despite Herb probably coming out and denying it, you know, to a lot of publications, you know, at that time. You know, going out and denying it to Dave Meltzer and whoever else would listen. Hey, it, everything's cool, everything's fine, everything's rosy. But, you know, what was really crazy about, you know, Herb at that time, and you can watch this on Dark Side of the Ring, is when he made the announcement that he was doing uh, UWF. You know, again, the potential of a new promotion, you know, worldwide national promotion, sounded great. You know, a new hat tossed into the ring, a new name tossed into the ring, that's great. But the first telltale sign that something was probably going to be a little off was, you know, when he did that press conference and he announced Bruiser Brody as part of the lineup. And it's like, why are you announcing Bruiser Brody who died, you know, a few years ago, who was murdered in Puerto Rico? Why would you do that? And that should have been basically the first telltale signs that something was off, but everybody, I think, at that time just shrugged it off thinking, oh, he's just excited because he's got this new promotion upcoming and everything. He's getting into wrestling business, stuff like that. And, you know, he just probably didn't think, you know, straight about, or didn't really think about who he was saying or announcing as part of his lineup. You know, I mean, he had talent. He had great talent. Greg Valentine. He had Steve Williams. He had Bam Bam Bigelow. Paul Orndorff, if you will. You know, Colonel De Beers. You know, the list can go on. Don Morocco. You know, he had Mike Rutunda, I think, even at that time. He had some talented names that you know, despite their, you know, some would say best days behind them, could still go and was still relevant to an extent. But yet, despite having these big names, along with some new up-and-coming young, fresh names, names, you know, he lost control. Like I said, not just of himself, but of the company. The There was just too much chaos behind the scenes. And like I said, when you hear what's going on with AEW right now, you know, and Tony Khan, it sounds, the the beginning stages of it, like, this, to this, to me, like, this is like, kind of like the beginning stages, you know, it sounds very eerily similar to that, to where, here's a guy like Herb Abrams that had all this money, you know, went out, got all, you know, bought, you know, created his own wrestling promotion, signed all this great talent, but then chaos ensued behind the scenes as the years went on, you know, and he started to lose control, not just of himself, but of his company. So, 
you have to wonder if we're having a similar, eerily similar situation with Tony Khan. Again, not saying it's identical, but it's very eerily similar. You know, to me it seems like it. To me it seems like it's eerily similar. And hopefully it's not going to go down that same path. But, you know, when you make comparisons to, okay, he's making mistakes like Bischoff did, or he's making mistakes like Paul Heyman did, and that's fine, you can make those comparisons. But... I think probably the best example of a very eerily similarity, even at the even at its starting point right now, is with Herb Abrams. Because, like I said, and everybody has echoed it. Everybody that's worked for the UWF has echoed it. You know, everybody that's, you know, worked for the UWF in some capacity you know, in-ring performer behind the scenes and all that have echoed it, the company had potential. It got a national TV deal somewhat with the sports channel for a while, which was a nationally syndicated uh, network, I think, or cable network, you know. And, again, it was it had all this promising, it had all the promise, I should say, not promising, but promise to be a great, you know, outlet for other talents that couldn't get into WCW or couldn't get into WWF. But yet it just fell through. Throughout the years it fell through. No matter, like I said, no matter how much you tried to fix it, correct the ship, you know, steer it in the right direction, his situations behind the scenes, along with, you know, losing control of the company, you know, it just became, you know, it just became too much. And people are seeing, believe it or not, very eerily similar start with Tony Khan. Like everything's been wine and roses throughout what they call the honeymoon phase and now that the bloom is off the roses and everything and the honey has gone stale um, and everything and the honey and, and, and all that it's like now people it's like now things are starting to rear their ugly head. Things that Tony Khan has tried to keep hidden and all that are starting to rear its ugly head and again it feels very and it feels like this is the beginning of all these revelations and all that now that the road the bloom is off the roses the honey has gone stale the honeymoon phase is over you know it's like everything that tony khan as i said tried to keep hidden is now starting to make itself known by those within the company and those that have been you know outside of the company those that worked for the company, I should say, it's starting to be, let themselves be known. And, you know, it's one of those situations to where if Tony Khan is not careful, even though he may not end up in a similar situation like Herb did at the end, he can go down a very similar path, you know, not just for himself, but for the company. And he's got to be careful. Like I said, I'm not saying that it's identical to what Herb did, but the beginning stages. You know, these revelations coming out right now, you know, that are coming to a boiling point somewhat. Well, not to a boiling point, but to a simmering point, if you will. Feel very eerily similar to what Herb did with AEW. To what's gone down with him, what happened with his company, and stuff like that. And I don't think anybody wants this, you know, AEW to, you know, suffer a similar fate like the UWF, like WCW, like ECW. You know, just be another name, you know, on the list, you know, of, of promotions that tried and failed to compete with WWE by being on such a big level. You know, people will look at Impact, a.k.a. TNA, and they'll be like, you know, by making comparisons, they'll be like, hey, you want to know why Impact has always stayed relevant for so long? It wasn't because they decided to go national on a major stage right away. They worked their way up. I mean, in other words, they went from, you know, garnering an audience on weekly pay-per-views to getting a deal, you know, on Friday afternoons and Saturday evenings with Fox Sports to building themselves up to get the deal that they did with Spike TV, now known, now known as the Paramount Network, you know, for several years. Because they worked at it, they built themselves up. And people will look at why Impact has lasted so long as it you know, has, despite how you might feel about it. And they'll look at 
AEW and they say probably one of the reasons AEW is suffering is because it's been too too uh, too much too fast asked asked and everything and now it's catching up it's like you didn't give it time to build you didn't give it time to simmer and come to a boil you didn't give it time for the foundation to really set in before you started building you know your empire you know and again people will make that comparison and say this is why a this is why impact has lasted for so long because they paced themselves no matter who was the owners and all that they paced themselves they knew what they were doing and people like I say make that comparison and and, and maybe they believe that what perhaps Tony Khan should do is go back to square one and be like you know what let's just do maybe an hour you know or not do an hour but let's just do maybe two hours of dynamite and maybe just do you know rampage on YouTube or whatever and be done with it or or maybe put rampage on hiatus or or as I suggested and maybe this is what he should do make rampage ring of honor I mean Hmm. And you have fans, you have fans like JD and Solo Monster and Alex being like, "Look, Ring of Honor needs to be its own thing. Either give it dark or dark elevation, or or do something with it. Don't keep constantly putting Ring of Honor championships on AEW shows. And maybe that's what they need to do with Rampage. Maybe this live experiment in October." You know, might be a testing ground of either getting a two-hour format that they want, or maybe it's a testing ground to see, okay, what if we make these rampages that are going to be live Ring of Honor focused, and see if there's an audience for that Ring of Honor product on a weekly basis. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, but the thing is, the thing is, you know. Like, the thing is Tony Khan is losing too much control right now and again you know when people make the comparison to Impact and make comparisons to what you know at least the beginning stages of the whole Herb Abrams deal you know being very eerily similar it's you know it's sad to see now hopefully hopefully someone like a David Zaslav or a Kathleen Finch at Warner Brothers Discovery We'll step in and maybe talk to Tony and say, look, we want to keep AEW on the air. We want to keep AEW here, you know, because it gives us, it brings in great numbers on Wednesday and stuff. But, you know, if what we're hearing is, you know, true, then you either need to shape up or we're going to have no choice but to, you know, take the axe of ass laugh and cut ties with you. And again, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So... Hopefully, Tony Khan, over time, corrects these mistakes, gets the right people into the right positions behind the scenes that he needs to, so that AEW can be that promotion that not only rivals WWE and what Triple H is doing over there, but also does give men and women on the independent scene and, you know, potentially whose contracts will be up on either side, you know, a choice to go between either one of the promotions but you know it's up to Tony Khan because right now you know right now he is going down at, right now he's in the beginning stages the beginning stages in my opinion of going down a similar track not identical but a similar track that Herb Abrams did you know when he hit, when he ran UWF very similar not identical but similar but what do you guys think? Do you think maybe I'm just grasping for straws? Maybe just, you know, looking too much into it? Or do you see that identical, you know, an identical similar path beginning to take, you know, visual fo visual uh, representation for Tony, you know, basically being identical, uh, similar to the one that Herb Abrams took? And do you think maybe people are correct in comparing the fact that the reason Impact has lasted for so long is they didn't rush things like Tony did. You know, what are your thoughts? Comment below, live chat during the premiere, like the video, 
and I will talk to you later. You can find me at all my outlets at BW with this discussion, all your favorite audio podcasts, locations except for Pandora. Also check me out at Venmo at Brian Dash One Two and at Cash App at BW Roses ninety eight. Also check me out on my Patreon at BW Roses for the one dollar three dollar tier. Also check me out at Vimo at BW Roses. And until next time guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Also check out the Teespring store. But let me know what your thoughts are down below and in the comments during the live chat. And super chats and super stickers will be open during that time as well. But let me know what your thoughts are. And I am out.